Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we'll be taking a look at Magical Industrial Revolution. This is a review copy that I was sent by Skirples. It is a wonderful hardcover, very thick and substantial book on a fantasy city, especially if you're interested in doing a high fantasy or sort of late Renaissance, early modern type city in your Dungeons and Dragons. This is a great place to uh, go to for resources. Let's check out the back of the book here. So this is a book about Atlantis before the tide turned. It's about Hyboria before it vanished uh, between dimensions. It's about New York City before the mushroom bombs hit. It's a setting guide to the greatest and most ambitious city in the world, Enden. It's about a world slowly tipping on its side and all the interesting things that begin to slide at the start of a revolution. It's about people with grand dreams pushing the boundaries of the possible and the strange machines and devices they create along the way. But mostly, it's about magic. This is a book packed with resources. It gives you everything you need to run one particular city, but the resources available inside make running any fantasy city much, much cooler. It's called a pre-apocalyptic setting guide because it's about the advances in magical technology that will inevitably end in disaster if the players don't do something about it. Before we dig into the book, though, um, I should point out that this channel is sponsored by Patreon. You can go down to the description below to check out the Questing Beast Patreon. If you want to sign up to help support the channel, then you get access to the super secret Questing Beast Discord. You get access to um, things that I'm working on behind the scenes, or you can even get your name immortalized in my products and in the video descriptions. Thanks to all of my patrons for their support. All right, let's dig in here. One of the things that popped out to me right away when I opened this book is that the paper quality is really good. It's really thick, much thicker than I'm used to seeing in a book of this size. Uh, the whole book is just done in black and white, but there is a uh, clarity to the way that the layout is done that makes things really easy to read. Uh, we start off with just a breakdown of basically what's going on here. What is Endin for? Uh, when is Endin? magic and not religion, and the general theory of magic. Endin is basically um, London, to all intents and purposes. Although, of course, you can reframe it as something else. It's highly modular. And we have a rundown of the basic things you're going to get in this book, which I'll go through as we run into them. Here's the city of Endin itself. It's a great illustration. The maps themselves are really well done. They're done by the same author who is uh, creating the City of Hex. I believe his blog is Bearded Devil. I think that's right. He's great at drawing cities, and uh, I'm glad to see that Scribbles hired him to do this. We have important locations. So we start off with basic map of the city, and then we can go through each of these locations in more detail. Notice how each of these has three different things underneath it. This has to do with tempo. So as more um, magical inventions are created and as technology improves, the tempo of the city can also increase, which will change what each of these locations looks like. We have a table of D100 buildings in Endon. We have weather, including nightmare fog that can show up, and some random encounters. Again, a D100 table. And now we get to the fun part, innovations. So there's eight innovations, basically three different lines of magical invention that are going to start taking place over the course of the game. I suppose at the start of the game, each of these is at level one, but they can all go up to level six. They all go through a certain process, initial innovation, public introduction, widespread adoption, scope alteration, height of ambition, and terminal events as things get incredibly out of hand and your magical invention wreaks havoc on the city and possibly on the entire universe. Each of these is really fun to read. I, they remind me a little bit of just short stories where you have like these kind of little parables where uh, an inventor creates something and then its implications are far greater than they really expected and things slowly go haywire. For example, room to live. So these cities are very crowded, so people are always looking for more space. 
Well, people realize that there are spells and magic items that can create, you know, secret rooms or make houses larger on the inside than they appear to be. But of course, as this gets more and more popular, as it becomes cheaper to cast these spells and get these magical artifacts, the city gets much larger on the inside. And soon all the buildings are just packed with endless corridors that no one can escape. Or perhaps you have a situation like the world without roads, where teleporters get more and more and more powerful. True polymorphing, a peaceful city where they discover that scrying can help you solve crimes much more quickly. And then mind reading becomes more powerful. And soon enough, the city devolves into this authoritarian police state where you can't even think something wrong or the cops will find you. A conjured workforce, right? This is the industrial revolution. Um, there's tons of people working their fingers to the bone, making all these machines work. Well, what if you could make your workforce cheaper by creating illusionary people? And what if you just kept making these until they were doing everything? What would be the consequences of that? So you got a little bit of black mirror in here, but it's done in a fairly tongue in cheek style. And it really sparks your imagination in terms of the way that the world is going to be changed as the city develops. We have how crime works and how justice works. The army, magical diseases, accommodations you might find, transport, newspapers, and yes, you can start your own newspaper. In fact, that can be a very advantageous thing to do. Breakdown of the social classes, what the classes want, how you get into these classes, how you get out of them again. What are the costs of being in these social classes? Scandals that might show up in your city. Who is the monarch? What is it like? The season. So the game basically takes place over the course of years. And each year, there's a certain part of the year when all the interesting things happen, which is just called the season. And so the game allows you to skip ahead one year at a time. You can run like little mini campaigns where you can run, you know, four or six sessions or so. It depends on how much you want to do. And that's like one season. And then everyone, you know, kind of retires for the winter. Things slow down in the city. Then the next season comes along and things perk up again. And by doing things in this structure, you can actually uh, go across multiple years of the city of Enden, and you can watch how the city changes. Because a lot of D&D games take place, you know, over the course of one day, right? So um, not much time really passes. And you end up with this weird situation where you have these, you know, new, fresh and, uh, PC characters, and then, you know, a week later, they're all at level 10, because so much has happened in those days. This encourages a slower pace, I think, to the world, which is good. Huge carousing table based on the eight deadly sins. Because your different characters, your PCs, can have certain weaknesses. Magical industry, price list. This is a fantastic game if your players are really into magic. They want to invent new spells. They want to create new kinds of potions. They want to do just crazy, ridiculous stuff with magic. This gives you all of the tools to make that really cool. There actually is a theory of magic worked out here. That's going to be really useful for players when they're trying to create their own stuff. We have metals and gems with their basic magical properties. So you can use this to make uh, judgment calls on what of their harebrained magical schemes are going to work. Magical explosions, how to design new magical equipment, a periodic table of spells and spell new mutations, because you can uh, put spells together in these machines and blend them up and see what comes out the other side. Uh, D50, generic low-level spells. And unique low-level spells. A lot of them are really fun, like Immolate Soul, or Inflict Remorse, or Lengthen Limbs. None of them are super powerful, but they're sure fun, and they would really uh, give the players... Uh, a real fresh take on magic. So everything isn't just combat spells. Things that allow you to interact with the world differently. And we have discount spells that don't really have any description at all because they're pretty self-explanatory. Like you have things like Glitterize or Deglitterize, a spell of Brush Cat or Toast Bread or De-Toast Bread. Giving your players a one-off spell like that would be great because you know they're going to find some weird way to use it that's going to be useful. You want to sell spells? You want to buy spells? We got the stuff to do that. Firms and disreputable wizards. Unsolved problems that players can work on. 
magic items. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to keep saying it, this is a toolkit and a really, really good one. Even if you weren't running a city campaign, your players just look like magic, this has an enormous amount of content that you can raid. Magic potions, D100 magic weapons, magical prosthetics. Some of these things I've seen on Skirple's blog, Coins and Scrolls, before, and I'm glad to see they're getting fleshed out and put to use here. NPCs and rumors, tons of them. Uh, D100 wizards or nobles, useful NPCs. So these NPCs aren't uh, referenced anywhere else in the book. They're useful as reoccurring characters, popping in and out of the PC's lives for good or ill. Write notes in the margin. And there is a lot of room in the margin for doing just that. You have mobs, because this is a uh, Industrial Revolution level city. So you're going to have mobs of people who just want stuff. Are you going to get in their way? Are you going to join them? There's rules for doing that. Thieves and urchins, scoundrels, rivals and villains, wrongs and injustices, and you get a section of a uh, menagerie, so new types of monsters. Elsewhere creatures, you get demons and things from you know elsewhere, Cthulian type monsters. The ghost whale of Endon, skeletons, the speaking rat society, stray spells, <laughs> D100 skeleton variants. That's really great. And dungeons. So we have, uh, you can explore underneath the city. It's a London-like city, which means it's going to have uh, catacombs and uh, sewer tunnels going everywhere. So here's some quick ways that you can um, create that. And we have a short little one-page dungeons here, or they're really more like adventure locations that you can quickly drop into a setting if you want to uh, have a short adventure there. Lots of floor plans, floor plans sorry, for generic dwellings. And some appendices at the back. Reasons to go there. Lectures, plays, and operas. And an index, along with some inspirational media. And I search the body. You always need one of those. Wonderfully, there is a summary page at the very back. I love this because this really gives you a sense of how everything's going to work all together and just the process that you're going to go through before a session, if you're going to use all of this stuff as is. We have a chart right here. This allows you to actually track the advancement of all of these different apocalyptic innovations that are slowly developing over the course of the game and how that's going to affect the tempo of the game. Solve my problem sheet. This is really great. Players need an expert. Here's some things you, here's some places you can go. I've done something illegal. Here's what's going to happen. Who's in charge here, et cetera, et cetera. A great summary where you can easily answer some of the player's most common questions. So this is absolutely great. It is one of the, probably the best city kit that I've ever seen. The closest thing that I can think of to it is, let me pull out one of my other books here, the Augmented Reality City Kit. And I think at the back of this book, it actually mentions that this was an inspiration for it. This is a great book for cyberpunk, and it's just random tables of everything that you might need to flesh out your city and make it cooler. And this does it for fantasy and for magical cities. So this is really highly recommended. It's one of the most useful books that I've run into. Um, as always, links will be down in the description below for where you can check it out for yourself. And uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you guys next time.